Today, we're going to establish the classic combinatorial theorem on counting the number of ways to order what's called a multiset. Counting, of course, is a masculine art, so like any masculine art, we begin with planting colorful flowers. Suppose we have five red flowers, three blue flowers, and two orange flowers, and we are planting them in a row. The question is, how many different ways can we plant these 10 flowers? Now, if all of the flowers were distinct, this would be just like having a set consisting of one, two, and so on, three, four, five, six, all the way up through 10, and just asking how many ways we can order the 10 objects in this set. And of course, that's very easy. The number of ways to order those 10 distinct objects would just be 10 factorial, which is 10 times nine times eight, and so on, all the way down to one. The problem here, of course, is although we do have 10 objects, they're not 10 distinct objects. Five of the objects are identical red flowers, three of the other objects are identical blue flowers, and so on. So in this problem, instead of counting the number of orderings of a traditional set, we're actually counting the number of orderings of what's called a multi-set, where each object may appear multiple times. We can denote this situation like this. We have five red, three blue, and two orange. As an example of how we could order these flowers, we could put an orange flower first, and then we could put the three blue flowers, and then we could put the five red flowers, and we could put the second and final orange flower at the end. This would be one ordering of the flowers, and of course, the problem with 10 factorial as a count for the number of ways that we could plant these flowers in a row is that it would count this ordering many different times. For example, if we imagine we had labeled the orange flowers one and two, we immediately get a second ordering that looks just like this by swapping the orange flower labeled one with the orange flower labeled two, although the resulting row of flowers looks exactly the same. Of course, the three different blue flowers cause a similar problem. Without actually changing the appearance of the row of flowers, there are six ways we could swap these three flowers around if we imagine that they've been labeled so that we could distinguish between them. And of course, those five red flowers only make the problem even more significant. The idea then to fix our count will be to start with 10 factorial, which just counts them as if all of the flowers were distinct, and then to to divide out all of the additional orderings that we don't want that result from having duplicates. So let's suppose that n is the total number of orderings that we're actually looking for. That is the number of different ways we could plant these 10 flowers in a row. For every one of those actually distinct n ways that we could plant the 10 flowers, we could get another five factorial ways of planting the flowers by distinguishing between the red ones. And for all of those, we could also get an additional three factorial ways to plant the flowers by distinguishing between the blue ones. And also an additional two factorial ways by distinguishing between the two orange ones. So n is the number we're looking for. It respects the fact that the red flowers are identical, the blue flowers are identical, and so on. But if we multiply it by this product of factorials, then that takes into account all orderings if we pretend that all of the flowers are distinct. Thus, this product is equal to 10 factorial, the total number of ways to order 10 distinct objects. And hence, we arrive at a pretty intuitive formula for n by dividing both sides by that product of factorials. n is equal to 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial. Now, if you've watched my video on subfactorials, you might find this a little ambiguous and insist that we get some parentheses in there, so it's clear that the factorials are on the right sides of the numbers like that. So this computation is actually pretty easy to generalize to count the number of linear orderings of multisets in general. If our multiset has n objects, in this case it's 
10. Then to count the number of linear orderings of those n objects, we just do n factorial, in this case 10 factorial, and then divide by the product of the factorials of the numbers of duplicates of each object that we have, thus dividing out all of those extra orderings that aren't actually distinct. We need to get a tad heavy on the notation to generalize this theorem, but here it is. There it is in all of its glory, but let me zoom in and read it to you. Let n k and a1 through a k be non-negative integers with a1 plus a2 all the way up to a k equal to n. This equation is important because n is going to be our number of objects and each a i is telling us how many duplicates of each type of object we have, where of course k will be the number of different types of objects. So the theorem goes on with that sort of construction. Consider a multiset of n objects where a i objects are of type i for all i from 1 to k. So again, each of these a i's is counting the number of duplicates of each type of object we have, and we have k types total, and of course n objects total. Then, the number of ways to linearly order these n objects is this, just like we saw in our example, n factorial divided by the product of the factorials of the counts of the duplicates for each type of object. In our example, the types of objects were red, blue, and orange, and so we had to divide by the number of red objects factorial, the number of blue objects factorial, and the number of orange objects factorial. Those numbers, 5, 3, and 2, would be our a1, a2, and a3 in terms of the notation in this theorem, and k would be equal to 3, of course, the number of types of objects we have. It is perhaps one of those theorems that's easier to just use than it is to read and understand every single word in a general statement of it. Let's use that theorem to solve another little problem. Let's say we have this multi-set of digits, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the multi-set contains 6 objects, and there's one type of object, 2, which appears twice. Let's say we want to count the number of linear orderings of this multiset where the twos do not appear in consecutive positions. This problem then will require us to first calculate the number of linear orderings of the multiset and then to take away all of the orderings that have the twos in consecutive positions. So let's see if we can figure this out. First, beginning by applying that nice theorem we just established, that is pretty easy. The total number of linear orderings will be 6 factorial, that's the factorial of the number of objects in the multiset, and then divide by the product of the factorials of the numbers of types of objects. So there's 1, 1, so there's 1 factorial. There's 2, 2s, so we have 2 factorial. There's 1, 3, so 1 factorial. And there's 1, 4, so 1 factorial. And 1, 5, so again, 1 factorial. I put the 1 factorials here just as an illustrative example. In practice, if a type of object has only one occurrence, you of course just wouldn't bother writing it since it doesn't actually influence the result. In total then, this is 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and that is 360. So that's the total number of linear orderings of the objects of this multiset. Finally then, we have to subtract the number of linear orderings which have the 2s appearing in consecutive positions. So how do we figure that out? How many orderings have the 2s occurring consecutively? Well, we can actually count those with a really cute strategy, which is to just regard the twos as being attached so that it's as if we only have five objects one the twos three four and five being forced to place the two twos consecutively is certainly the same as regarding the pair of them as a single object so then the total number of linear orderings of the multi-set so that the twos appear consecutively is the same as the total number of orderings of this which we now regard as just a normal set because there's no object which appears twice the one appears once the three appears once the four appears once the five appears once and the pair of twos which we're regarding as a single 
single object also appears once. So the number of linear orderings with the twos occurring consecutively is just five factorial, the number of linear orderings of a set of five objects. Five factorial, of course, is 120. So then the answer to our question is found by subtracting the two numbers, 360, and then take away all of those linear orderings where the twos occur consecutively, and thus we get our final answer of 240. There are 240 ways to linearly order the objects of this multiset so that the twos do not occur in consecutive positions. One last problem to try before you go, this classic introductory combinatorics problem, in how many ways can the letters of Mississippi be arranged? This is easily solved by just using the theorem we've discussed, so let me go ahead and write out the solution. Hopefully you've figured it out. All we need to do is begin with the factorial of the total number of objects at hand, which in this case is just the total number of letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our numerator will be 11 factorial. And then we just need to divide out those duplicate orderings. We have four S's, so we'll need to divide by four factorial factorial. We have four i's, so we'll need to divide by four factorial again, and we have two p's, so we'll also need to divide by two factorial. We only have one m, so we don't have to worry about that. So it's 11 factorial divided by four factorial times four factorial times two factorial, and that is 34,600 50, which honestly to me seems like quite a lot. Yeah, there's 11 letters, but so many of them are duplicates. Despite that, there are still 34,650 distinct orderings of the letters in the word Mississippi. So that's how to count the number of linear orderings of multi-sets. Those are sets with duplicate objects. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.